Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome to my video for the September 2024 Oh So Inspired Collaboration Hop. If you're new to my channel or new to this collaboration, it is one that I host each month here on YouTube where myself and a team of collaborators take the same inspiration piece and create something new based upon it. As you hop along today, you'll see a wide variety of styles and creations. It's always interesting to see how that original piece inspires widely different projects. Once you're done watching my video, I know that you'll want to go check all of them out. So you can use the playlist link at the end of this video or the playlist link or channel link down in the description box below. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see what they created and leave them some love. This month's inspiration piece was created by Megan K, who is at Made by Megan over on Instagram. The card is up on screen now, and I know that you'll want to go check it out and get more details, so I also have the post linked down in that description box. What is inspiring me from this card is the color combo, the white, black, and yellow, and I'll also be using a bee themed for my card. As I get into the process, I'll talk to you about the products and tools I use, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! All right, before I get too deep into the process, I did just want to stop by and say what I'm doing today is pretty much an experiment. I'm not sure if it will turn out, but cross our fingers, hopefully it will. Now the one thing I do know will kind of work is me making my own ink sprays because I did test my TE reinkers with some water a couple weeks ago and it did work. So here I just have a little spray bottle with some water in it. I filled it up probably about a third of the way. And also, I don't know if you can see them, but I have some nail polish beads in there just to help with mixing. Since I knew the TE inks didn't react with water, I wasn't sure if they would work with a water spray, but from my test, they do seem to. So for today, I'm going to be putting some drops of the Honey Reinker into just some distilled water to make a background, which I cut a piece of watercolor cardstock to four and a quarter by five and a half. Let's cross our fingers and hope that this works. I wanted to do a couple different shades of the spray. So for the first one, I'm going to go lighter because I can always add the reinker, but I can't take it away. I'd have to go get more water. And for this first round, I ended up doing about three drops. Once I had the lid on tight, I shook that up and then I started spraying my cardstock. I kind of tested different distances from the paper, pressing down harder or quicker on the nozzle just to get a little variation. When I had what I thought was a first layer down, I brought in my heat tool to dry that and I thought mm, maybe it needs a little more color. So I added some more and dried it and now I'm going to do some darker spraying. So for the next round, I added about another three drops and then I used the same technique, switching up the distance and the pressure and I sprayed some more onto the cardstock. I thought I'd also want some darker drip, so I pulled the nozzle out of the bottle and kind of tapped on the end. I will tell you I ended up getting more spray on the paper towel and my surface around it, but I do like the variation this gives. Finally, I did the drying process one more time, and then I set this inside of a book and underneath a couple books over on the counter while I moved on. I am using the Honey Bee stamp set from My Favorite Things. I chose one of the cute little bees and the sentiment that reads, you're as sweet as can be. Now I am going to change it just a little bit. I will be stamping with Memento ink onto some Nina Solar White because I will be doing a little bit of coloring with Olo markers. 
I got the image and the sentiment set up on my scrap of cardstock. I did need some space to the right of the sentiment, so that's why I have it kind of more down toward the bottom. And now when I pick it up with the door of the Misty, before I ink it up, I brought in a little piece of scotch tape, making sure only to cover up the word B, and then I inked up the sentiment and the image. Now before I go to actually put this onto the cardstock, I did make sure to remove the tape, otherwise I'm going to have a big black splot and then I got it stamped down. I knew for the B I wanted to make sure it was nice and solid black so I inked up just the B one more time for just a little bit of a darker impression. For my markers today, I'm using YO 2.5 and YO 2.7. I thought it would match the honey very well. And then I also got out BK Black and CG1 to do the stripes on the bee and add a little definition to the wings. I'm going to get started with the darkest shade of yellow and color where I want the shadow to be. Well, I realized, you know what, this doesn't look too dark. And then I realized I put the wrong caps on. So I uncapped the other end, which was actually the YO 2.7, and redid the shadow. And then I brought back in the lighter marker and blended that out to fill in the body of the bee. Now you could have only colored the areas where the yellow would be, but this just made it simpler. For the stripes, I will be using the black BK, and I just colored in every other one, and then the little stinger. To finish the image off, I used the CG1 and went around the inside of the wings. Off camera, I cut down the sentiment, and I cut the bee using the coordinating die. I also did some other die cutting, the first of which was cutting the word B from Tailored Expressions Mini Caps Alpha Set, and I'll end up putting the word B at the end of the strip, so that's why there's that extra white. I used the Honey Cluster die on a piece of honey cardstock, it seemed fitting, and I used the second from largest stitched rectangle stacklets to cut down my ink sprayed piece, which had dried nice and flat in the books. Also, from the A2 postage stitch stacklets, I die cut the largest one out of honey cardstock. To finish off the sentiment, I glued down the letters to the right side of that strip to help get them on there as straight and as even as possible. I used some Barely Art liquid glue and tweezers. That liquid glue allows me some time to move it around before it's set in place. Now the main elements of the card are ready, so I spent some time auditioning the pieces, figuring out where I wanted everything to go, and when I liked the layout, I removed the bee and the sentiment, and I left the honeycomb right where it was, and I brought in a piece of scotch removable tape. I made a little hinge on the left side so I could kind of flip that back and then add the glue. This way I don't have to worry later if I didn't get the placement exactly right. Once I have added the glue and lay it back down, it's where I originally wanted it. I gave that some time to dry off camera, and while I was off camera, I also added foam tape to the back of the sediment and the bee, and I punched out a little circle of vellum to go behind the image. I thought this helped it stand out from the background, but you can still see the honeycomb cluster. Then I used some scissors and just trimmed off the excess. I brought back in the postage stamp mat and add my sprayed piece flat down onto the center of it. Because it had warped a little bit from the moisture, I did add a little bit more adhesive than normal. Then I figured out again where I wanted the sentiment and the vellum piece to go, and I got the sentiment put in place. And this was kind of when I figured out, oops, I probably should have waited. Normally when I have foam pieces on the front of the card, I put that on after it's on the card base. So I went ahead and brought in the black card base I made off camera and got my postage stamp put on the front. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the B added, which I had put in the center of the vellum. So I add a little liquid glue behind where the foam tape is and got that put in place. I set a stamp block on the top of it to let it dry completely. To finish the card off, I added some sparkle to the front with gold diamond dots. I just scattered them from the top left to the bottom right, and I also decorated the inside. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create today's beautiful card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to visit Megan's original piece and all of the collaboration team videos. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.